in today's video we're going to be discussing one of those ever so classic hip hop groups that were popular in the early 90s. This group in particular is one of those half forgotten memories that dominated the music scene and released an absolute banger of an album before fading away almost instantly. St. Lunatics is the topic of today's video, we're gonna be discussing where they came from, what happened to them after their platinum album, and where each individual is today. Let's begin. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. It all started back around 1993 when childhood friends Cornell Haynes Jr., also known as Nelly, Ali Jones, Tory Hopper, also known as Murphy Lee, Robert Cleveland, and Lavelle Webb, also known as City Spud, all got together and decided to form a hip hop group. The group originated in St. Louis, Missouri and was spearheaded into success by Nelly, although there was no lead artist in the group. Despite their best efforts, it wasn't until around 1996 that they managed to sign with the label. The label was called D2 Entertainment. It was with them that they managed to edge into the limelight around 1997 with their single Gimme What Ya Got. The single is groovy and bouncy, there's no other way to describe it. The single helped to cement the group and give them their signature sound but although it was a local hit, it failed to hit any charts. Luckily, the group's hard work paid off around 1999 when Nelly was signed to Universal Records and his group soon followed. He was signed both as a solo artist and as part of St. Lunatics but per his contract he had to release a solo album first. His album was titled Country Grammar and hit listeners around the early 2000s. The album was explosive in its success, earning platinum certifications in multiple countries and eventually settling on the phenomenal feat of earning a diamond certification in 2016 after selling over 10 million copies in the US alone. Now obviously it didn't gain this certification back in 2000. The project debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 235,000 copies in the first week. And by the end of August 2000, the album had sold about 1.5 million copies in total. Four singles of the album were released, namely Country Grammar, E.I. and batter up. Better Up also had St. Lunatic's features, this time with Murphy Lee and Ali. All four of the singles achieved success on the charts globally with Country Grammar placing number 7 on the Hot 100. When these songs came out, it was very difficult to escape Nelly's sound. His songs were everywhere. And the crazy thing is, this is just the beginning of Nelly's story. Nonetheless, while Nelly was building his empire, the group were working on their debut album and also campaigning for the release of fellow group member City Spud. Spud had gotten into some trouble around 1999 and was initially charged with first degree assault. Prosecutors then dismissed the charge and he was sentenced to 10 years for armed robbery instead. In honor of their locked up group member, Nelly and the Saint Lunatics went on to name their album after him, calling it Free City. Now did you ever wonder why Nelly wore a bandage on his face back in the days? I used to be like, yo, what the hell is this? And the crazy thing is, once Nelly started doing it, I saw other people doing it as well. Nelly famously rocked a band-aid on his head in solo performances as a nod to City Spud, a move that eventually formed part of his signature look. The album Free City followed on the tales of country grandma almost exactly a year later, releasing around June of 2001. The new album absolutely rocked the charts. Whether it was due to Nelly's previous success or the Free City campaign isn't clear, but one thing's for certain. People loved it. Numbers don't lie and Free City sold about 196,000 copies in its first week and debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and went platinum a month later. Their songs Summer in the City and Midwest Swing were released later that year and remained at number 3 and number 1 respectively on their most listened to tracks on Spotify. 
Other super catchy anthems from the album include Here We Come, Grooving Tonight, and Let Me In Now. Though the album had undeniable success, the group eventually split to pursue solo careers despite the fans yearning to see another St. Lunatics album. The decision to go solo was led by Nelly, who was experiencing more success than the other members of the group. Around 2006, the St. Lunatics dropped a compilation album titled Who's the Boss? The album was not supported by Universal Music or Nelly for that matter, but all of the original members are on the tracks and is mostly made up of early St. Lunatics music from 1996. The album failed to gain certification, but it's worth mentioning considering they only released about two albums in total. After the split, each member tried to release their own albums and create separate solo careers, although Nelly was the only member who was truly successful. Ali released Heavy Starch around 2002, and Murphy Lee featured on its only single titled Boghetto. Every other member of the group got at least one feature on the album, except for City Spud who was still incarcerated at the time. The album performed decently on the charts. It came in at number 24 on the Billboard 200, but failed to gain a gold certification. He tried again in 2007 with Ken Folk, a collaboration album with Big Gip of Goody Mob. Needless to say, the album was a flop and performed worse than Heavy Starch. The album failed to gain certification and Ali gave up on a solo career. Murphy Lee had slightly more success, releasing Murphy's Law around 2003. It gained a gold certification and featured his hit single from the Bad Boys 2 soundtrack, Shake Your Tail Feather, with Nelly and P. Diddy. The album peaked at number 4 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 134,000 copies in the first week. Murphy Lee was on the rise. He came back around 2009 with You See Me. Interestingly enough, all of the members of St. Lunatics appeared on this album, including City Spud who had been released the previous year. Now, the album was a massive flop as well and was released on Murphy Lee's website as a freebie if a DVD was purchased with it. Murphy Lee also appears to have given up on a solo career but launched his own record label, You See Me Entertainment. Now Nelly had a highly successful career after the split. He dropped Nellyville around 2002, which became seven times platinum and became the 14th best-selling rap album of all time. Now when Nellyville came out, it's safe to say that Nelly was dominating hip hop and was at the top of the game. Often here is a good single off the album that did amazing things for Nelly's career, but the song that really put Nelly on the map was Dilemma featuring Kelly Rowland. The song is his biggest hit to date. Another single that comes to mind, the song was clearly intended for the clubs, and I'm not talking about the clubs that most people go to. The strip club, baby. Over and Over is another single that blew up, but I won't lie, this is probably the only song by Nelly that I can't stand at all. But who cares about what I think, because this song was a hit and did amazing things for Nelly's career. The Saint Lunatics appeared on Getcha Getcha, American Dream. Ali appeared on Down in the Water. Out of about 24 tracks, the Saint Lunatics appeared on about four, yeah, about four tracks. Whatever that means, it's up to you guys to decipher. Around 2005, Nelly released a compilation album called Sweat Suit, which had highlights from both albums, Sweat and Suit. It received a gold certification. For a compilation album, those numbers are pretty good. However, when it came time to drop his next album, Nelly quickly realized that his fan base was declining. He dropped Brass Knuckles in 2008, which had features like DJ Khaled, Kelly Rowland, Chris Brown, and T-Pain amongst others. And despite a vastly star-studded cast, it only managed to go gold. 2013 brought his fans M.O. The album once again had some impressive features, like Nicki Minaj, Wiz Khalifa, 
2 Chains and Nelly Furtado. But despite all the features, the album debuted at number 14 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 15,000 copies in the first week. In the second week, the album dropped to about 5,000 copies in that week. Nelly dropped another album in 2021 called Heartland and let's just say his first week numbers were abysmal. Now let's go back to 2009. In this year, City Spot was released from prison. However, by the time it got out, it was too late for him to jump on the St. Lunatics train. He had a buzz nine years ago, but by the time he got out, his fans had forgotten about him. There was talk of getting the St. Lunatics back together to release another album called City Free to celebrate his release, but it didn't get that far off the ground. Two promotional singles for the album were dropped titled Money Talks and Polo. As well as two leaked singles titled Saint Lunatics and Low to the Flow, but to date the album has not materialized. In 2010, a former sort of member that went by the name Slow It Down went at Nelly for not paying his crew fairly. Slow never performed vocals or wrote lyrics, but he was an ever-present part of the crew. Famous for being the masked hype man on stage, he joined the group around 1996 and helped build an energy and hype around the group that got them signed later that year. In one of his interviews, he had the following to say about Nelly. Whatever we did, Nelly got half of that shit, and the rest of the group split that up. And when it came to splitting the money, I wasn't part of the rest of the group. I ain't write no lyrics or nothing, but I brought more to the stage show to the image. <laughs> I was more part of the brand than the lyrics. I think I was more appealing to the kids, the youth. Now in situations like this, I think to myself, doesn't Nelly deserve half of the money because he is the only reason that people are checking for the group in the first place. In this case, Slow was simply a hype man. And let's be real, if he wasn't on stage when Nelly was performing, nobody would notice and the show would go on because nobody ever goes, ooh, Jay-Z's playing tonight. I hope I get to hear Memphis Bleak play some songs. Nah, bro, we came to see Jay-Z, not your hype man. About a month later, Nelly responded to the claims, calling Slow lazy, and claimed Slow used his position as an excuse to depend on others rather than using it as an opportunity. The word there is opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to make something of myself. To make something of myself. Somewhere along the line, the word opportunity became reliability. He further explained that Slow didn't even come to the studio when the group was making music and that he would show up and be the hype man for about an hour. And that was the extent of his contribution. You know, they didn't write music. They wouldn't even come to the studio to even hear the music get made. You wouldn't even hang out in there and tell God, you see what I'm saying? And it's just like, yo, what are you talking about? And you made a substantial amount of money, which, which is unbelievable. In addition, Slow made $500,000 for his appearances. You didn't even sell the mask. That would have been the first thing I would be trying to do. We did something to you, we took care of you. Had that been me, oh I'd be on tour right now. It would have been the Slow Nelly tour. I'd have figured out something. This guy, you didn't even sell the mask. You see what I'm saying? I, mean, I don't mean to get like this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But I, I just felt like you wouldn't even mass produce the mask. That would have been the least. That would have been the first thing I would have been trying to do. It's like, yo, at least let me start a mask business. Maybe I could do, you know, at least make money on Halloween. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't even think of that. I don't know, man. I'm with Nelly here. If you're paying a man $500,000 to be your hype man and he only has to work for one hour per session, come on, that's easy money. Nelly was clearly doing this man a favor. Now around 2020, Ludacris and Nelly went head to head in a versus battle. The battle was made even more interesting because the lunatics had beef with Luda. They have accused the artist of copying their style and ripping off their material as detailed by the incredibly vocal Ali. In the days leading up to the battle, Ali laid several accusations out at Luda on Instagram. Ludacris used to steal our shit so much, I just used to be like, nigga, would you stop? I'm telling you, he did fantasy, I was like, damn my nigga, he just straight took our whole shit. Then we came out with Midwest Swang, and he came out with Saturday. I'm like, would you stop? Leave us alone. He then revealed that they tried to flip the script on him with his 2003 single P Popping. After waiting for the single to drop, 
The group immediately dropped Nelly's tip drill so that he couldn't rip it off. Then the shit got serious. We went and made tip drill. It was all directed at him. The whole thing. We done reversed on his ass. We finna, <laughs> we finna tear your ass up. Pussy popping was no longer. It's not even talked about anymore. Despite the big talk and initially serving out some of the best rounds, Nelly unfortunately lost out to Ludacris with the people's vote. Sorry Nelly, maybe next time. Now Nelly and Ali were on really good terms until around 2021. In fact, notably, Ali is featured on most of Nelly's solo work. Despite this history of friendship and collaboration, Ali shared a screen recording showing that Nelly had unfollowed his Instagram account and then a long Instagram post a few days later accusing Nelly of having hustled the group in his path to solo superstardom. Which is partially true. He is the only lunatic to blow up. But more on that later. In the, in the clip, Ali claims he started the group around 1993. He taught all of the members how to rhyme, how to write lyrics, and how to count bars. He also said that he had to fight for Nelly to be featured on their earliest hit, Gimme What Ya Got. According to him, the label did not want Nelly on the track, and he even claimed that he was offered a solo deal of his own, but turned it down in favor of keeping the group together. However, when Nelly was offered a similar deal in 1999, he took it quickly bringing the group into the fold by 2001. According to Ali, after Nelly took the deal, Nelly had his manager call Ali to tell him that he didn't need any help in the writing process anymore. He closed with a statement, I ended up helping him write but got no credit. Wow, I got hustled. Nelly had his manager call Ali to tell him that he didn't need any help in the writing process anymore. Once again, Nelly set the record straight in another interview with the following. There's three people in this group that's been a lunatic since day one. Nelly, Key One, and City. We all went to school together, alright? When we first started the lunatics, Ali was not in this group. Stop me when I'm lying. He also argued that Ali didn't originally perform with the group, initially being brought on as a manager. In addition, he disputed Ali's claims about gimme what you got. Ali done got everybody to sign but me. My back against the wall. I ain't got no leverage. He also explained that his initial decision to go solo didn't sit well with everybody and claimed that the rest of the group didn't want to work in Free City unless they were compensated well. This was something he said he personally ensured by getting the label to take the money out of his own solo budget. From there, the feud began to lack cohesion, with Ali making accusations and posts that were seemingly unrelated. He accused Nelly of lying about bringing the group together again when the 20th anniversary of Country Grammar was rolling out. He insists that he has been telling the truth and has reiterated his claim of starting the group, amending himself by saying that his initial goal was not to be a member but rather a teacher. Now one student has moved to Hollywood and chose a lifestyle that doesn't allow him to remember things as well as others. The former Soul Cold brothers continue to fight back and forth, throwing accusations at each other through interviews and Instagram, and though the posts have stopped, there was no exact end to the feud. It doesn't seem like that final album will come out after all. After finding success in the music industry, Nelly tried to branch out into other fields. He starred in the reality TV show Nellyville, which ran for two seasons. It was about Nelly's music, acting career, and raising his children. From about 2013 to 2016, he formed part of the main cast of the mockumentary series Real Husbands of Hollywood. He took part in the 29th season of Dancing with the Stars in 2020. And yeah, let's just say Nelly is a busy man. The last recollection I have of Nelly is probably when he went over to hug a shanty during the versus battle. <laughs> that moment became so iconic that Nelly had to talk about it in interviews. This year, he announced his return to the Real Husbands of Hollywood for its continuation on Netflix. He is still actively performing, and his last performance was in Long Beach over the Super Bowl weekend. Now, our favorite opinionated rapper Ali now goes by Papa Lizzie. He still releases music quite often, but is much more difficult to track than Nelly. He dropped a new single last year titled, It Is What. It is. It is what it is. It is what it is. 
Ali appeared on about 90% of Nelly's catalog and uses his Instagram as a personal blog where he posts everything. He sells a wide variety of clothing merch and wears matching dope pajamas with his wife and four children. You can catch him with the Instagram handle at Papa Lizzie. It's not verified but it's definitely him and on Twitter at Saint Lunatics underscore Ali. As far as music goes, City Spud is also difficult to track. He didn't release any albums after he was released from prison, but dropped a few singles in 2010 including Everywhere We Go and We Gone Ride. Since then he has featured in a handful of singles, including most recently Nelly's Miss Drive Me Crazy. A little miss, miss behaving, a little miss drive me crazy. He still performs fairly regularly and is far more of a family man today. It appears that he has about three or four children and you can catch him on Instagram at Dirty City and on Twitter at City Spud. Murphy Lee has done a bit of a turnaround from his early years. He's far more focused on his family, although he is equally hard to track. He's married to Sevin Lee, who he constantly refers to as his BFF and features on many of his songs and they have at least three children. He has recently dropped an album called Second Time Around, which was dedicated to his family. She Is Her was written for his wife. Three of his children feature on the album and it has a slightly more political ring to it. In addition, the album is family friendly. You can catch him on Instagram at Murph Dirty and on Twitter at Murphy Lee. Key One is actually Murphy Lee's brother and co-founder of You See Me Entertainment. He's currently working on his first solo project, Wake, Bake and Create, although it's unspecified if this is a music project. He continues to pursue writing movies and directing and has recently started a premium vape juice line with his brother called Vape Your Tail Feather. Last year he dropped the single Talk That Shit Time with Murph and Papa. But lately he just seems to be selling a lot of merch clothing. You can catch him on Instagram at Q1LunaticOG. And there you have it folks, that's the story of a group of friends that rose to fame almost overnight after years of grinding. The world loved them and they fought to try and get their brother out of jail, they released a banger of an album and remained friends for the better part of two decades. As to whether or not they will ever release new music, the jury is still out on that considering the beef between Nelly and Ali. The Saint Lunatics get about 80k monthly listeners on Spotify and their most popular songs on the platform are Midwest Swing, Here We Come, Summer in the City, Grooving Tonight, and Let Me In Now. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to the Saint Lunatics in your opinion? Let me know down below. Video requests, be sure to let me know as well. New What Happened to video dropping next week. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace. Uh -huh.